Hi guys, this is Matthew, uh, the developer of N Ratings for uh, NASCAR Racing 2003. And with this little video, I would like to show you guys uh, the uh, new things I've added in version 3.2, which was released on the 17th of uh, September 2011. So, um, let's get started. So, this screen hasn't really changed. Uh, we still have our instances here, I only have one. Uh, we have our uh, mods that we can choose from. I will select the Cup 11 uh, mod. Okay, and uh, the big the, uh, new things are in the real data screen, so let's go there. I assume you all know this uh, screen by now. Um, okay, let's select the 2011 season. Uh, that's pretty much the same as before. When you double click on it, that was before also, but you see the results. The new things are here. Uh, now I have integrated uh, loop data from uh, racingreference.info. Uh, what is loop? What does loop data mean? Let's check it out for Daytona, for instance. Loop data has all kinds of interesting data that we could use to, uh, to use in the, in the variables in the, in the formulas. So um, the cool data we have here is for instance uh, for each driver we have his mid-race position uh, so that's the position he was at mid-race uh, the highest position he's been in lowest position he's been in for uh, the race or obviously uh, the selected races uh, no sorry this is only for this race I'm running ahead of some things. Uh, this is only for this race. So, highest position, lowest position of the race, average position he has been in uh, during the whole race. Uh, total amount of green flag passes. So, this is pretty high here actually, but okay, this is uh, Daytona, this is super speedway racing. It's okay, I think the high number uh, explains itself. Uh, green flag times being passed, so uh, Regan Smith has uh, 355 green flag passes and has been passed 321 times on the green. Uh, quali quality passes. Quality passes are passes made inside the top 15. So Reagan Smith has made made himself 244 passes on guys inside the top 15. So that's pretty impressive impressive number. Fastest laps, the amount of uh, total fastest laps uh, that the driver has uh, achieved during the race. So, uh, Regan Smith ran during the, I don't know how many laps were they, did they go over time? I don't remember really. But for the 200 laps, Regan Smith drove uh, four times the fastest lap. And he drove 152 laps inside the top 15. That's what uh, this variable means. And then there's an interesting uh, column which is rating, and this is a rating given by uh, RacingReference.info themselves. So th I didn't invent this number; I just, I just took it straight from their website. Uh, they it's a it's a score they give on a 150 scale. So the maximum score you can get is 150. So here we see Regan Smith got 116 and a half. So that's a pretty good number. Uh, Trevor Bain, the eventual race winner, uh, got a 108, so that's pretty logic. I don't know the, the exact logic behind the, the uh, uh, value they give to this rating. Um, they take into account a lot of a lot of parameters, I think. Uh, but it's it's a, it's a, a number we can use uh, for the formulas because it it, it gives more than the, than only the results. It gives also. Uh, uh, a view on the performance of the drivers inside a race. Okay, so this is for loop data. Um, the other thing I've added uh, is pit stop data. So let's check check on this. Okay, here here we got the pit stop data for the Daytona 500 2011. Um, so we see uh, for each driver we see the number of stops he made, uh, total uh, time he spent in the pits and then the average time spent in the pits. So obviously if you only make one stop your total time will be your average time. That's pretty logic. Dale Earnhardt for instance had a, has a pretty good average time in the pits because he made 11 pit stops and uh, for a total of two, 320 seconds but his average time was 29.174 uh, seconds. So uh, this uh, this data could be used uh, in for the uh, pit crew ratings. To you, we could use it 
some clever force could uh, could invent a uh, formula that takes into account this uh, this data. Last column we have here is bin to garage, and that uh, is just a true or false uh, column. Uh, when there's a checkbox, obviously it's true, and it indicates that this driver at some point during the race went to the garage. So, if you see this, you could probably because. The average time is also calculated, uh, I think, if I have understood the uh, racing reference data correctly. The average time uh, takes also into account if the driver has been to the garage. So, um, if this checkbox is checked, you can you could say, okay, this, this figure here uh, is not really representative for this driver because it includes some garage time. So, uh, yeah, maybe we should also consider this when developing formulas around this pit stop data. Okay, so now loop that and pit stop data is not always available. Um, it started to be available, I think, for the Sprint Cup series around 2005, if I remember correctly. Uh, so before that, uh, you won't see any. So for instance, if I take, uh, let's let me let me take 2005. Let's see if we have it here. Yeah, our loop, data, loop data is available here for 2005, but pit stop data is not. So, if if one of these data is not available, um, or you will see uh, the the button will not be active, so you won't be able to click on it. Okay, so I think if I take 2004, there will be nothing there. Yeah, okay. So loop, uh, loop data was starting from 2005, and pit stop data, I think it's 2007. But then again, not all, even no. Not all races, even even um, 2011 races, they d do not all have uh, associated pit stop data. Uh, sometimes I don't know uh, something went wrong, or I or the racing reference or info website didn't uh, didn't get it, or I don't know. I think for Talladega, uh, let me find Talladega here. I see there's no pit stop data for this uh, this season. I don't know why, but okay. If there's data on racing, racing reference at info, I probably should have taken it. I I've took it <laughs> no, normally. Okay, so now actually it's uh, try to work with this data. So um, let me select also again the Daytona 500. Now what what you see here is two new bu two new buttons. We've got the variable inspector and we got the preview ratings button. So. Um, what does a variable inspector do? I have selected the, the Daytona 500 here as a single race. If I uh, check on this button, you will see the, all the uh, variables and their associated values that you can use in your formulas. Pretty neat, huh? So I have only selected one race, obviously. Daytona 500, Trevor Bain won it, so his average finish is 1, which is pretty obvious. He started 30 uh, second in that race. Uh, best finish once pretty normal. Uh, actually, let me t let me take just uh, a couple of races. Actually, let me take them all of 2011. That will be a bit more representative. So I click again, variable inspector. All right. So Jimmy Johnson uh, is probably has the uh, they are sorted by average finish. So Jimmy has has the uh, best average finish over the whole season. Uh, he finished. Uh, he has an average finish of 10.6, average start of 14. Obviously, he's he has won one or more races, so he, uh, he his best finish is one, best start is one. These are new variables, by the way. These weren't weren't available um, in previous versions. He has uh, that number of race starts. He has that number of percentage percentage of race starts. So one means 100%. So he took part in uh, all the races that we've selected here. Okay. One means 100% of the selected races. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse, for instance, um, he only made one race start in the selected races here, so his percentage of race start is uh, 3.8. Okay, this is you have to. Uh, this is explained in the help file, but you have to uh, multiply this number by 100 to get the percentages. And average number of stars. This is also a new variable, and this tells you that for the selected races, the average number of starters was this number, and it is 
uh, it is de dependent on each driver because you could have uh, obviously for sprint cup this is mostly going to be 43 for all drivers but you could have maybe uh, one guy, I don't know if there's an example here, probably not because we were in sprint cup and there's always 43 drivers um, but you could have one guy that you you selected for say one uh, one race and one of or you select all the races but in one of these races um, for instance one of the races um, there was there were only 20 drivers and and that that race was the only start that Dale Jr. made so um, that is obviously just just a bad example but just to 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 uh, Tell you how it's how it's working. Then would read Dell Jr. Uh, would his his, his uh, race starts would read one, and then his average numbers of starts would read twenty. Because in the races we selected for Dell Jr., uh, his average starters number of starters was twenty. So we can use this variable um, to to for instance an average finish. If you have an average finish of of fourteen on forty three, that's pretty good. Okay, if you have an average finish on 14 over an average of 20 stars, that's okay. That's less good. That's uh, like uh, you. That's like saying uh, you always finish in the bottom half of the sheet. So, uh, so this 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 is a new uh, variable that can be very interesting to add uh, also to your formulas. Um, so what else have we got here? Wins polls. I think we had polls. Uh, was one uh, one I've added. I think. Um, top five, top ten, DNFs, DNFs due to crashes, DNFs due to mechanical failures. We we had that uh, before. Uh, percentage of the laps completed. Okay, one means 100%. So this guy, yeah, obviously he made only one start. Ricky Stenhouse, he made only one start in the races we selected, and he completed all the laps. So he's got he got his uh, percentage of laps laps completed on 100%. Here's another one. Steve Wallace also took part in one race only and finished all and finished uh, finished that race on the lead lap, so he completed all the laps. So if you go to, for instance, Jimmy Johnson, you'll see that his percentage of laps completed is 99.2 percent, so it's pretty good, pretty good number. Same principle, percentage of laps led for the selected races, uh, average position by mid race, okay. So this is this is using the new loop data uh, um, that we've seen that I explained before. Um, average highest positions uh, as the average ha highest position that driver has been uh, in selected races. So on average, Jimmy goes to third position on average uh, for each race. I think you get the point. Um, I know I'm probably not explaining it very clearly, but if you think about it, I think you you can understand how it works. Average lowest position, obviously. Uh, average position, average position uh, overall. Average uh, lap by lap, that is. Uh, so average lap by lap, lap by lap, lap by lap. Dear God, position. Uh, so so. What this number means is that for every lap of every race, uh, the position was recorded. And they made an average of at, at uh, all the positions that he was in for each lap. Okay. Um, again, that's pr probably not the best explanation you'll get, but uh, if you think about it, you'll, you'll figure it out. Uh, average green flag passes and average green flag passed, which obviously means th times being passed. Uh, so this this again uses the uh, loop data we've discussed. The quality passes. Remember, quality passes means uh, passes inside the top 15, and uh, the percentage of how much passes were quality passes. Uh, average fastest laps. Yes. Okay. Average. Uh, so that means uh, Jimmy Johnson on average for one race he turns 19 fastest laps inside the race. That was that's what this uh, figure means here. Uh, average percentage, so uh, he's got that amount of percentage of the fastest laps. Uh, average top 15 laps, average percentage of top 15 laps, average average rating. Um, that's the rating we talked about that racing reference that info gives. And uh, okay, uh, I think we covered this one. Yeah, this, so this 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 variable uh, will be pretty in interesting to use. 
average pit stop time rank. So the rank uh, this used the obviously uses the uh, pit stop data we discussed about, and uh, for each race I have uh, I have ranked uh, the the pit stops from fastest to slowest, and this is the the the. Um, the average rank in which uh, this driver ranks in for in terms of pit stop uh, uh, speed okay so uh, Jimmy Johnson ranks on average 19th out of the 43 stars uh, in terms of pit stop speed the amount of races he's been to the garage so for the selected races uh, Jimmy Johnson has been three times to the garage and the percentage of races we selected so we selected uh, I don't know up to uh, Richmond before the chase so um, that's uh, what is that that's 26 races so uh, 26 uh, 3 on 26 should be about 11 percent you know, probably is right <laughs> you can filter this thing by uh, track type uh, which is pretty cool too. So now we have uh, the average on of all track types. Uh, if I take only the road courses, oh, big surprise! Who do we see on top? Marcus Ambrose. Obviously, he has uh, an average finish of three. He has a best finish of one. Uh, Watkins Glen, I think that was. And uh, race starts. Obviously, there's only been two races in 2011. That was Watkins Glen and Sonoma. Uh, he started 100%, okay, average number of stars, and there we go, all the rest is the same. Okay. Yeah, no, sorry. Now uh, that we've selected uh, a specific track type, a road course here, um, you remember, and if I selected all track types, Ricky Stenhouse was here, he made only one race start. Well, we can deduct if we select road course, Ricky Stenhouse doesn't figure in the list or he figures at the bottom of the list which means um, he his, he hasn't got any data for road course so the only start he made in the selected races was not on a road course so all this data for him is empty in programming languages that's null as uh, in N-U-L-L okay? so you won't have any available data for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. for a road course Okay, same thing with super speedways, same thing for uh, short tracks, and same thing for speedways. Okay, so we see Ricky Stenhouse here. So the only start he made was on a speedway. Okay, I think you get the point. So that covers the uh, uh, variable inspector. Now, if I select here um, a formula, and let's uh, let's take uh, the uh, super magic uh, secret uh, mass graphics uh, cap formulas then I can do preview readings as well also a new feature preview readings and for each rating uh, that you can uh, change in, a in uh, for in the NASCAR racing 2003 car you have the uh, preview minimum maximum that's it um, so you can before you apply uh, these ratings to your cars, you can actually uh, see, look at them, and see what they, what they're going to be like. Um, I will probably add in the future a some sort of function that you can sort these things, or maybe something that calculates these some kind of spread of how the field will look. Uh, so to pre to predict a little how 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 races will evolve and what the finishing positions will be etc but that's something i still need to to work on and uh, to figure out and to think about okay so then next thing is we just uh, apply as usual and the rest hasn't changed uh this is pretty much uh, the only thing so i can save my cars do we want to this is obviously i want to save and there we go this hasn't changed from the previous version, so the uh, we covered all the uh, uh, changes and the important changes. So I hope you uh, learned something from this. Um, if you have any questions, please you know how to find me. You can go to my forum. Uh, you can click help visit support forum. You can uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. Uh, anytime, go to my website or and uh, and uh, just ask you a question. I will gladly answer them. Okay. Thank you for your attention, see you guys soon and happy racing!